So, as most of you all know, but some may not, because I've seen a lot of people running around with the Tor and Heritage armor, but there's also a lot of people that don't. Maybe they just don't like it. Who knows? But I was unaware it was actually in the game. I knew it was coming in with 8.2, but I went and looked at the achievements. There was no Tor and Heritage armor achievements. I'd done, as far as I wear, all the quest, all the quest. Words grim, they're hard. Try to form them. Take your time. Breathe. It's not like it's important. It's audio for a video you're doing. It's not like the words you're saying are in any way meaningful. Actually, they're not, but... Anyway. So. We have this whole quest chain. That we have to do. You have to do Bane's rescue. And once you've done it, supposedly it opens up the heritage armor. But I was expecting maybe a letter from Bane saying, Thank you for rescuing me at these times. It's good to remember, you know, our people. It doesn't. You basically have to go to, as you see in the beginning of this video, and this is the entire quest chain. I will say that this video is about 15 minutes long, and it's the entire thing, apart from with travel. There's a lot of travel in this, um, so be warned. But uh, I have to cut that out, and it's literally just a quest. I will say, if you're a balanced druid, I apologize profusely. I'm not a balanced druid. I've never played balanced before. Uh, I play resto on my druid. That's it. That's what I enjoy playing. Um, but I decided with all the hype, with all the, all the uh, goodness that's going on at the moment with balance Druids, I thought i will give it a go, especially for this quest, I thought, why not? Let's try it out. I'm an awful balance Druid. I get a little better towards the end, but there's a point where I actually almost die at the beginning, because I have no fucking idea what I'm doing. Anyway, yeah, so apologies for the balance Druids, so everybody else enjoy my completely epic failing. So, as you'll see, there's a lot of jumps in this video. That's purely me cutting out the travel between various locations. So, what is the quest itself? Well, you're kind of told, oh, there's flux going on in the spirit realm. You need to talk to your spirit guide. Very Tauren type stuff. Now, this wouldn't be a grim video without me going, oh, I think like, it could have been better and I missed a trick doing... And, yeah, I do kind of think that. I was hoping with... The whole Bane blood hoof and the situation we're currently in and with Ken before, and with Ken being mentioned, if you watch a cinematic with Thrall, he mentions Ken being one of the, the big regrets that he's got. And I thought with with these things being permanent, as I say, with Bane being rescued, spoilers, apologies, and with Thrall returning and him saying about his deep regret for the things that have happened in the past, I was hoping that the, the Heritage Armor quest line would be much more in the vein of this is the story. This is the story of the Torans, of what they were before the Horde turned up, before Thrall, and the reason for them joining the Horde. Because if you think about it, I understand that the Eastern Kingdoms and the humankind is predominantly the interaction with the Orcs. Kalimdor was left to its own devices. So they may not have known about the, the the orc horde destroying, you know, the the Eastern Kingdoms and the realm of men. But still, these were very warlike looking people, and I know Thrall was very peaceful, but there must have been a great hesitancy in joining the horde, helping them out. Now granted he saves his son and all these sort of things that we had in Warcraft 3. So, I can understand, but it would have been really good to explore more of that and, you know, what the the Torrens thought going through these various key phases. One of the things I, I really loved was the uh, the elf, the blood elf questline for their heritage armor. Now, very much it was about the, you know, Arthas and what happened to them. So it was about a very specific period in time. But I think that's so crucial for them. And so many things happened in that period of time. That it was good just to tell that story. And it would have been good to see. It would have been good to see that spirit and that heart. And it does try and touch on that. It does very much talk about. Uh, the, by the way apologies. This is my epic failing. As a balanced druid. Yeah. But fuck it, I'm brave enough to put it in, and uh, I play a warlock. I have no fucking. Anyway, so there is part of that. There is a lot of this, the spirit realm, things that are going on, things that are happening, and you, you see at the very end, Ken actually appears with uh, Bane's mother, 
and they talk about oh, oh, oh you can't destroy these this this evil this entity because it is mu- it's as much needed as the goodness is needed you have to have both to balance and Torrens are about balance and so they touch upon that a little bit they touch upon a little bit but it would have been absolutely fantastic if they had have gone through a lot of these things from the Tauran aspect because we don't see it a lot we don't see the Tauran side of things I mean, we... they've talked about one of the things that always baffled me one of the things that I thought when they got into it that I thought was fantastic with Bane was in War Crimes I believe it was where he has to represent Garrosh and everything Garrosh has done he's one of the most affected he lost his father because of Garrosh but he still steps up and he defends Garrosh grudgingly granted but he defends him and that was huge for me I was like that's fantastic it's a really interesting character development for him and unfortunately they've never gone into that depth since then with him we've kind of got him in before the storm writing letters to Anduin because they're super best friends and giving him a little bit of his horn at the end because Sylvanas was a meanie and said they can't talk anymore and he feels in game he's very wet he's Another character I'd compare him to would be Malfurion. Malfurion in the books is phenomenal. Unstoppable. Just an absolute... Just dervish of destruction. In the... In game, he's basically... Tyrande! Tyrande, I need you! Tyrande! Tyrillion, my love! It's like... Malfurion, I'm coming for you! Oh my... It's... Awful. I have no idea where Terrellian came from. Jesus. I'm 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 law bleeding. Like laws bleeding into one another. What are you fucking talking about? Terrellian's completely different. Oh, that's just I tried to block it out. That whole any of you that any of you have done Legion, you'll know that quest though. Tyrande, I need you. I've just I've mentally tried to block it out. So um <sighs> Oh, to that quest line. Fuck, I hated that so much. And I did it on every ult. Every single ult. I had like, I don't know, 15 at the time. I did it on all of them. Oh. Oh. Snap out of it, Grimmins. Okay, come on. Come on. But like, Malfurion is, is hugely important in the books. An amazing character. But is basically a wet fart in game. And Bane, for the most part, is seen the same way. He acts the same way. And it's a shame. This could have been a real good opportunity to explore. Maybe, you know, touch on Bane. But also look deeper and look to his father. And look to the Tauran people as a whole. Why would Bane do these things? Why would he appear wet? Well, he's in fact not. Ken is is a fantastic character. He's far... He's superbly strong. He's an, he's an amazing warrior. Garrosh even says that when he goes into the arena with Ken and they're fighting before Ken gets hit, Garrosh is actually worried he could lose the fight. That's how powerful Ken is as a warrior. But also he's far more than that. He is the sounding board for Thrall. Thrall's got an idea. Thrall's thinking about something. He goes to Ken. He's like, what do you think, old friend? And Ken's like the heart. He's the voice of reason. But also is this incredible warrior. And Bane's meant to be the same. But you don't see that. And it would have been fantastic if that fleshed out. Anyway, that and that's it. That's the only grumble I have about this quest line. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I love. You'll see the the dynamic when you come back into Morgul when the spirits are meant to have risen. Everything's all dangerous. You come back in and all of a sudden you're literally flying in. And it goes vroom, into like these mists of darkness, and it's incredible. It's really, really good. And that's what for me was slightly dis. I keep. I, I'm trying to sound positive, and I. Overall, I enjoyed it. That's fine. But I just feel it was a missed opportunity. You can tell that love went into this. We're about shadow of a doubt. And they try and get you to explore the area to see Tauron places you may not have gone before. You go into uh, the Stone Mountains. and or You go around all sorts of little areas. And you can tell there's love. And there is this, this is desire to... As I say, give you a little bit of a glimpse into the Tauran people, and that's fantastic. And I think that's what Heritage Armor should be. Without a shadow of a doubt, it should give you a glimpse into 
the past, and I, when I say past, I mean games, books. It should give you the full story, as much as it can. Obviously, it's going to be watered down. But it should give you a feel, a vibe for this race. What it means for Azeroth. What it means for, uh, you know, the faction they're part of. The Gnomes for the Alliance. The Tauren for the Horde. What is their reason for being here? What is it they bring? And I think that'd be a really interesting thing to explore. And I think the Heritage Armor gives us the ability to do that. You know, what is it that the... I mean, God, God help them what they're going to work out on what the goblins bring the Horde. But what do the goblins bring? What do the trolls bring? We have these glimpses, and the glimpses tend to be through characters. You know, We see that the trolls are... You know, an ancient, ancient people. But we generally see it through the eyes of characters like Vol'jin. The orcs we see through the eyes of Thrall or Sourfang or Garrosh. And the orcs we generally have a lot more experience with because there's been a lot more main orc characters. The Torrens. The Torrens are... If you don't look at the books, they're a very... Oh, race. There's not really a lot they do. The Blood Elves. Now the Blood Elves obviously we know a lot about through Sylvanas and certainly through Arthas we know all about that. But again in game they are ah, they're there. They're part of it. As I say like the goblins. And the heritage gives us a way to explore that. And I thought they did it brilliantly as I said before with the Blood Elves. Absolutely fantastic on point. And it also gave us a little taster about Sylvanas we saw a little bit there so if you haven't read the books if you if you were new and you didn't see you know you didn't go through the Arthur's storyline you weren't there for Wrath of the Lich King I think the Heritage Armor gives us a great glimpse for people to be able to see that to be able to see what these characters and what the what the race what the group of people went through and what they bring as I said before and as I've said multiple times, so far, and I take the Magar Orcs and I take um, the the more recent ones. The more recent ones, they're kind of developed with this in mind. I think the Blood Elves are a good example of a uh, older race introduced in TBC that was never or wasn't designed for heritage armor. They didn't know that was around the corner. And I think they did that really well. The Torrents, again, feels like... And I've said... Apologies. Because this is me repeating myself over and over again. And I don't mean to. I feel this is a really missed opportunity in not giving us the background to the Torrent people. I really, really do. Um, as I say, I love the armor. I think the, the heritage armor looks fantastic. I think the quest itself... A low, a missed opportunity, which I'm not going to go into again. It's still a really good quest line, and as I say, it's done with love. It is designed to show you, you know, glimpses of these different Tauren locations, and it gives you an idea about their more spiritualistic, you know, leanings and about balance and about how that's core to their beliefs, and. Uh, as again, as I said before, I, I mean, this was done with pure love. And when I played it, when I did it, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Without a shadow of a doubt. And it's because of that. And it's because I don't tend to play Tauren very much. But I was actually looking for more. I wanted more about the people and who they were. But... That shouldn't take away from the fact that I think this is a really good quest line. I am baffled as to why it doesn't show up right at the beginning, why you don't get something once you've met once you've met the criteria, saying to you, you know, you are now able to unlock your heritage armor. If it does, somebody please leave a comment because I completely and utterly missed it. Um, I've got uh, two touring characters and I didn't see it on either. Now, granted, one of them. I wouldn't have been surprised if I'd have missed it. This character, my Rezors, my Druid, he had everything good to go. I had done the rep grind on him. For those of you who watch the stream, you will know. And, um, yeah, I th thought something would come up. Anyway, this is the very end. You go onto the hill. 
and you meet your spirit guide who has sort of followed you or gone through and led you through all of this and told you what's been going on and uh, they're like well done well done if you need me again i'll be here there is one bit i will quickly say that uh you would have seen which is where ken as i said before and ken's mother turn sorry and bane's mother turn up i can never remember her name it's tam something or other they turn up and bane's like i really want to talk to you about things there's things going on i want to talk to you about there's so much i want to talk to you about and ken's like i know but not now i really hope that means that he's going to do some sort of spirit walk and talk to um his father about the things that are going on but i don't know whether this is tied into bfa's timeline i would imagine not so therefore i think that might just be generic things like how do you feel about being killed by gauche who knows but anyway that is it done if you wait two seconds bring there we go that is the heritage armor and I'll be honest and say, it's probably one of my favourites. Uh, I think the Megara Orc's still up there at the top, and then probably the Blood Elf and this one. That is me done. Apologies for the length of the video, but I did want to show the entire quest. I will catch you all in a video tomorrow. Have a good one.